roster cut down date is right around the corner and i have for you an initial 53 man roster projection before the preseason finale against the jets that's coming your way next on the locked on giants podcast you are locked on giants your daily new york giants podcast part of the locked on podcast network your team Every day. Today's episode of the Locked On Giants podcast is brought to you by FanDuel. Now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three week free trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Visit fanduel.com slash locked on today to get started. Hello, New York Giant fans, and welcome to another edition of the Locked On Giants podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast family. Your team every day. I'm your host, Patricia Chana, credential member of the New York Giants media for Locked On, as well as for New York Giants on SI, which is where you can find my written work. And as always, welcome on into my Blue Crew community members, to my everydayers, to my newcomers, and everybody else in between. Thank you so much for spending part of your day with us here on the Locked On Giants podcast. And if you are watching on uh, YouTube, please consider subscribing to the channel. Click the little notification bell so that you're notified every time I post a new video and like the video if you wouldn't mind as it all helps the algorithm and it is appreciated. All right. On today's Locked on Giants podcast, I'm recording this on a Thursday night. So the Giants obviously have not played the New York Jets in the preseason finale, but I'm going to give you my initial 53-man roster. Um, there's some... Obvious decisions here, not so obvious decisions, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down each position group and tell you who I think is going to make it and who might not make it and why. Uh, so again, this is an initial 53. Now this could change based on what happens with the jet game. So for example, if there's an injury of some sort that could have an effect, but I'm going to kind of go down this list and, and give you an idea. So that's our agenda for today. Now, before I get started, it's important that I mention the change in the IR rule. All right. So for those who don't know, the NFL tweaked the IR rule, the injured reserve rule. Whereas in the past, if a player was placed on injured reserve by the 53 man cut down date, that was it. He was done for the season. There was no chance of bringing him back or designating him for return. This year, the NFL tweaked that you are allowed as a team to bring back or to place two guys on injured reserve at the cutdown date and designate those guys for return later. Now, each team, remember, gets eight designations to return. If you use your two on cutdown date, that comes out of the eight that you are given uh, for the year. All right, so that factors in because now you don't have to steal spots from other roster areas if you need, you know, if you want to keep a guy, you don't have to necessarily sneak him through to waivers and hope that, you know, nobody claims him because now you have that flexibility in the roster with the IR rule. All right. So that being said, let's go through the list. All right. I'm going to start off with quarterbacks. I've been saying this all along. My mind has not changed. The Giants are keeping three. I do not think they're going to be able to slide Tommy DeVito through to waivers. I don't think they really want to. And I say that because you have Daniel Jones's injury history. Drew Locke is coming off an oblique issue. Um, Drew Locke is going to be the emergency quarterback Saturday's game against the Jets. So he's still not quite 100%. Tommy DeVito is going to get a big chance to play, it looks like. As a matter of fact, he might play the whole game against the Jets on Saturday. And above all, this is so important, head coach Brian Dable likes to have quarterbacks who know the system and who have been, you know either been with him in Buffalo or with the Giants. So I just don't see him getting rid of Tommy DeVito. I know they've never carried three quarterbacks on the roster before with Dable and Shane in charge. This year, I think they make the exception. And again, that's all due to that new IR rule, which I'm going to get to a little later on in the program where I think they might use that. All right, moving on, running backs. Now, initially, I thought they might carry four. I'm going with three on this one. 
starter is going to be Devin Singletary, and you, your backups are going to be in order Tyrone Tracy Jr. and Eric Gray. I think that's going to be your order, Singletary, Tracy, and Gray. Now, what about Dante Miller, you guys might be wondering. Dante Miller, if you notice, hasn't played a whole lot the, the last you know couple weeks. Sometimes teams will do that because they don't want to expose them and their film to the rest of the league. They want to be able to slide a guy onto the practice squad. I think that's what's in play here. All right. I know Dante Miller, you know, had an injury um, not too long ago, but he's fine. I think that the Giants are hoping to slide him through to the practice squad and make him their fourth running back. They're not going to carry four, but they kind of want to carry four, but the fourth guy being on the practice squad. So that's how I see that one going. All right, tight ends. Now, initially, I would have thought three because I still say the receivers are going to be the predominant group, but I think the Giants will go with four. And I have Bellinger, Theo Johnson, Chris Manhurts, and Jacob Johnson, the fullback slash tight end, making the roster. All right, so basically I stole a spot from running backs for Jacob Johnson. I think Jacob Johnson could potentially make this roster. Now, here's the interesting thing that I'm not 100% sure on. You know, can you make the case that Chris Manhurts can take care of all the blocking and Jacob Johnson, maybe you don't need him? You could say that. You could say that keeping Manhurts and Johnson is kind of, you know, duplicating efforts. But I think they're going to keep the fullback. You know, Dable had a fullback up in Buffalo, hasn't really had a guy like that down here with the Giants. I think this year they do that. I think Lawrence Cager goes to IR, but I'm not so sure Lawrence Cager is going to be one of the guys they designate to return. All right, now let's go to receivers. This one was kind of tricky for me because I dabbled between keeping six and seven. Ultimately, I went with seven. And the starters I have, um, well, actually the seven I have, Malik Neighbors, Jalen Hyatt, Wondell Robinson, Darius Slayton, Isaiah McKenzie, Allen Robinson, and Miles Boykin. Those are the seven I have. That means Isaiah Hodgins is out. Gunnar Olszewski, who's dealing with an injury, he's out. Um, Bryce Ford Wheaton is out. All right, so let me explain my selections here. Um, neighbors, no-brainer. Hyatt and Robinson, no-brainer there. I think they keep Allen Robinson because of the big slot capability, and plus he's a, the veteran of the group. So I think they kind of really like that with him, and I could see them keeping him. Isaiah McKenzie becomes your punt and kickoff returner over Olszewski. Miles Boykin, for those wondering who the heck is he, He's only been one of the best special teams players the Giants have this summer. So I think he makes it on specials. And, of course, Darius Slayton, who everybody seems to want to get rid of, he's going to make it. I mean, you know, I could see a case even where Darius Slayton in the starting uh, three when they do the 11 personnel, I could see Slayton maybe uh, ahead of Jalen Hyatt at this point in, in time. So, you know, the depth chart really, they're not a big deal. But that's how I can kind of see it starting the season. All right. Coming up next, we're going to do offensive line, defensive line, and inside linebackers. So don't go anywhere. Hey, Giant fans. So when you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs, it has all the tools you need to help you find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just a job board. They help you hire professionals you can't find anywhere else, even those who aren't actively searching for a new job, but who might be open to the perfect role. 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours when they use LinkedIn. And did you know that LinkedIn is constantly finding ways to make the process easier? They just launched a brand new feature that helps you write job descriptions, making the process so easy and so much quicker. Find out why 2.5 million small businesses use LinkedIn for hiring by posting your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. 
All right, everybody, welcome back to the Locked on Giants podcast. I'm your host, Patricia Trena. And coming up on the Locked on Giants podcast, I'll have a podcast for you probably Sunday morning. And I'm going to see if I can get Coach Gene Clemens to join me for that particular podcast. And we'll probably do like a post-Jets recap. You know, what did we learn this summer? And we might talk about, you know, revisit the 53-man roster if there's any changes Um based on performances or injuries or stuff like that. So that's what we're looking at for the weekend. And then of course, you know, as the roster cuts are made, we'll break all that down for you. We'll look at the 50, the uh, initial 53. We'll look at any waiver wire claims. If you know, the giants go crazy with waiver wire claims, which I think they might, I'll see if I can't grab some of my locked on co-hosts uh, from around the different teams networks and see if I can get them on to talk about some of these guys so that, you know, what the Giants are getting. And uh, so that's what we're going to focus on um, over the weekends going into next week here on the Locked on Giants podcast. And I hope you will, of course, tune in and check it out. All right, getting back to our initial 53-man roster projection. And I say it is initial because it will change. All right, so there will be waiver wires, additions made. There will be cuts made. There will be all kinds of different decisions made. So this 53-man roster that the Giants set next week is not necessarily the roster they're going to go into week one with. And this roster that I'm giving you, just my best educated guess based on what I've seen, based on numbers, based on any number of factors. So let's continue on, and we will look at the offensive line, where I had the Giants keeping nine guys. All right, so the nine, the starters, would be Aaron, uh, Andrew Thomas, John Runyon Jr., whose shoulder, by the way, is 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 going to be fine. It shouldn't be a problem for week one. John Michael Schmitz at center, Greg Van Roten at right guard, Jermaine Illuminor at right tackle. That's going to be your starting line. Your backups, Aaron Stinney is going to be an interior backup. Um, Austin Schlotman, I think, makes it as a center guard. Josh Azudu as a guard slash tackle and Evan Neal, who I think is, is going to get some guard reps at some point. They're going to start cross training him at some point um, while he's kind of backing everybody up. He's going to probably be your main swing tackle. So nine guys um, amongst the guys I don't have making it Marcus McKeithen, who, you know, six round draft pick, I think a couple of years ago, just hasn't had a good camp. And now he's dealing with some sort of injury. Um, I have Matt Nelson, who was a tackle, a veteran tackle that they added in. Um, hasn't really stood out, so I don't think he makes it. Jimmy Morrissey, guard center, I think he loses out to Schlotman. Um, yeah, and Jay Kubas. I don't have him making it, but I think Jay Kubas potentially makes it to the uh, practice squad if he clears waivers. So the Giants, this offensive line, you know, Carmen Brasillo has done a good job with this group. And uh, I really like and, and feel a little bit more comfortable with what I've seen from the offensive line this year than I have maybe in years past. So I kind of like this step, assuming that there's no injuries that pop up. All right, defensive line. This one I had uh, five guys staying. So I've got uh, Dexter Lawrence and Raheem Nunez Roches. Jordan Riley, Elijah Chapman, I think makes it, and DJ Davidson makes it. Now, initially I had DJ Davidson not making it. That was when Ryder Anderson was healthy, but Ryder Anderson waved with an injury. So that opens up a spot for Davidson. Um, I think, you know, in terms of will they activate all five of those guys on game day? Probably not. I could see maybe Davidson being the inactive guy. Uh, Chapman has has certainly played well, has earned himself a spot in my mind. Um, I don't have Casey Rogers making the the uh, the fifty three, but maybe he's a practice squatter. Um, Casey Rogers hasn't looked that bad in preseason, but I think he's still a, lot, a little on the raw side. So uh, I think the Giants are going to be fine with their um, defensive line depth, which initially was a little bit of a concern for me early on, but kind of straightened out somewhat. Okay, let's talk about inside linebackers. Now, this one, because of injuries, kind of got jumbled up a little bit. 
Um, I have obviously five guys, Bobby O'Karake and Micah McFadden uh, are, are the starters, my projected starters. I'm listing Isaiah Simmons as an inside linebacker making the roster. Darius Mwaso, a guy who initially I didn't think he would make it. This was early on, but Mwaso has really come on. Um, the one guy I'm not really sure on, I have him making my 53, but he's got an injury and I don't know how serious his injury is. So I'm kind of hedging a little here is Matthew Adams. Now, Matthew Adams is a really good special teamer. I think if he's healthy, he makes it over Carter Coughlin. But again, because of that injury, I wonder if he doesn't, you know, make it and Carter Coughlin does. I don't know how severe the injury is. And you can make the same argument for Deontay Johnson, who looks so good early on and has been dealing week to week with a high ankle sprain. So the injury situation there kind of muddies it up a little bit for me. But I do think the Giants go with five inside linebackers. Okay, uh, let's do the outside linebackers too, since we're talking about the outside. Since we're talking about linebackers, um, I have them keeping four. Now this is going to be an interesting one because I could see potentially a trade here. So let me give you the four that um, I'm looking at: Kayvon Thibodeau and Brian Burns. Obviously, I think Boogie Basha makes it. Now, the fourth guy, initially I would have gone with Aziz Ojolari. But I think Benton Whitley has played well this summer, well enough to maybe be the fourth guy. And he can also play special teams, by the way. If I'm the Giants, and I'm getting a little bit ahead here because I'm going to talk about cornerbacks in the next segment, we all can probably agree that the Giants need cornerback help. Now they are sixth in the waiver wire order, the claiming order, which will be the same as the draft order this past spring for like the next three weeks. So there is a chance they can get somebody off the waiver wire, but I go back to how they restructured Andrew Thomas's contract and they didn't do a full restructure. They only restructured, you know, I, I think they cleared about three, a little over 3 million which to me suggests that maybe they're going to use some of that money towards waiver wire claims. But here's the thing. Good cornerbacks are really hard to find. And I think if somebody doesn't become free, the Giants could be a little proactive and just say, look, Team X, whoever the team might be, we have a young pass rusher in Aziz Ojolari. You know, we need a quarterback. How about we do a swap? I could see that happening. I really can. Because, again, Benton Whitley has looked pretty good this summer, maybe a little bit better than Ojulari, who, by the way, is in the final year of his contract. So I would not be shocked if that's how the Giants proceed to get a cornerback because, as I'm going to say in the next segment, they need cornerback help big time. All right, speaking of the next segment, we'll take a break. We'll finish up with cornerbacks, safety, special teams, and final thoughts. So don't go anywhere. This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. We all have self-care non-negotiables in our lives, but sometimes life throws us curveballs with our schedules changing to where it becomes easy to let our priorities slip. But even when this happens, non-negotiables like therapy are more important than ever. And if you're thinking about starting therapy, why not give BetterHelp a try? It's entirely online and designed to be flexible and suited to your schedule. Fill out a questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist. And if you find your assigned therapist isn't a match, switch at any time for no additional charge. Don't skip therapy day. Visit BetterHelp.com slash LockedOn to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash locked on. All right, everybody, welcome back to the Locked On Giants podcast. I'm your host, Patricia Trena. And again, make sure you keep it here all weekend long. We're going to have a recap after the Jets game. Not so much a, a traditional game recap, but more or less a performance type of deal where we're looking at uh, 
how the Giants did, um, who helped themselves, who didn't, any notable injuries. Um, if you watched the show yesterday, you know that the Giants, the execution against the Jets just wasn't very good. Um, not a reason to be concerned, I don't think, but you know, certainly something you want to see improved and sharpened up as we get closer to the regular season. So uh, we'll keep you updated on everything. And of course, I will also on the YouTube channel, as we have any breaking news of significant, I'll do a quick short post that for you so that you were kept up to date on everything. So hope you will check all that out. Let's get back to our 53 man roster projection. All right. So we've got a couple more, uh, three more positions to group. Might as well get the easy one out of the way. And that's the specialists. Nothing to see here. All right. It's going to be all right. Nothing to see here. It's going to be Graham Gano, Jamie Gillen and Casey Kreider. Jude McAtamey, he's they've got an international roster exemption on him. He goes to the practice squad. All right. Case closed there. Really, with special teams, the thing of interest is going to be who's going to be the kickoff returner. And I covered that, you know, with receivers. I think it's going to be Isaiah McKenzie who wins that job. All right. Let's look at the defensive secondary. Let's talk about the safeties. I have four. Because remember, Isaiah Simmons can be counted as a safety as well, but I'm talking four pure safeties. Jason Pinnock and Tyler Newbin, I think, are going to be your starters. And I have uh, Dane Belton making the team. Now, the fourth guy I have, and I'm kind of not sure because he's also dealing with an injury, and I'm not sure how this is going to affect him because I don't know how serious the injury is. I'm going to see if I can try and find something out on this um, at the game or after the game on Saturday night. I have Javarius Owens making the roster, but I'm just wondering if maybe Raheem Lane edges him out or do they pick, maybe even pick somebody up off waivers. Um, again, I don't know how serious the injury is to Geo Owens, and that's why I'm kind of hedging a little bit here. But if I can get some clarity on that when I go to cover the game on Saturday night, then when we do um, an updated roster projection with Coach Gene on Saturday or on Sunday, excuse me, um, I can probably, you know, uh, give you a better take on that. All right, cornerbacks. Let's talk about that spot. I am of the opinion that there is a cornerback out there that is not yet on this roster. And I talked about it before about a possible trade. I talked about a possible, you know, waiver acquisition. Let me give you the six that I have based on who is already on the roster. I've got Deontay Banks, Nick McLeod, Andrew Phillips as, as the starters. Andrew Phillips, of course, being the slot cornerback. Cordell Flott is injured, Trey Hawkins, and Darnay Holmes. Now, Cordell Flott, who has the quad injury, I could potentially see him being a candidate for the new IR rule that I talked about at the beginning of the show. Now, if that happens, I'm looking at, you know, who's left over from this list. Trey Herndon, David Long Jr., Breon Borders, Caleb Hayes. No, actually, I'm sorry. Caleb Hayes was cut. Uh, Christian Holmes, Mario Goodrich, Alex Johnson. If Cordell Flott goes to IR under that new IR rule, that spot likely goes to a guy who is not yet on the roster. That is my best guess there. So the cornerback situation, look, the Giants got to add to that spot. I don't care where they get the guy from, how they get him. They got to add to that spot because that unit, the execution the other day against the Jets was alarming. Some of the execution we've seen in the summer has been alarming. And you look at the, the receivers that the Giants are going to face this year, they better shore that spot up and short up in a hurry. I think they will with who that remains to be seen. So that is my initial 53 projection before the jet game. Obviously again, injuries and performances could tip the scale. We will revisit this on Sunday. Uh, again, coach Gene is supposed to be with me. So we'll revisit it then. Hope you will check that out and just stay with me all next week as the giants Settle their roster, settle the practice squad. We'll have takeaways, all that good stuff. 
And then the team is back at practice. So we'll just follow that along as we get closer and closer to the regular season opener. Thank you so much for joining me here on the Lockdown Giants podcast. It is appreciated. Giant fans, I'll talk to you again soon.